Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You won the game. Congratulations. You won the game. You accomplished a goal. You got that girl. You achieved that certain physique. You hit that milestone. You passed that test. You got into that school. You traveled. You did that move. You, you did what you said you was going to do. You felt like you won. And now you're in that state. And three months have passed by. And now you still sit in there in the same state that after hitting your goal two weeks later that you was in, AKA comfortable. You know, right when you hit the goal, right when you, you know, in the in the momentum of this um, kind of like high speed action movie of life and you right in the midst of it, right? It, it, it's bliss, it's joy, it, it's pure abundance, it's pure happiness. But right around that two week mark, right around that two week mark, where we just hit the goal, you know, we passed the honeymoon stage, quote unquote, not the two two week mark that could be metaphorical, but could, could be the three month mark for, for certain situations in life. It might be a three month, 90 day rule in relationships, but that's besides the point. Usually it's like after we have set that outcome, set that certain desire, we made it definite, we made it clear, we made it plain, we put it, in, you know, we do the affirmations, we do the goal setting, and we get that thing, then two weeks later, we sitting there and we like, Damn, is this all there is? Is this, I did all that for this? Damn, I thought this was supposed to be different. And then we start getting these thoughts, right? And then what do those thoughts do? Those send us into uh, a, a negative emotional state, you know, our whole temple's down. Now we might start to self-sabotage. We at this level, we felt like it was supposed to be a certain way. Now we self-sabotaging, going back to old habits, going back to an old identity of who we used to be. And next thing you know, we repeat this for a few more weeks, repeat this for a few more months, and now you're just back in the state of comfort. So what I want to talk about in this video for that pretty long intro is how to identify this pattern in your life and naturally what's the process to not only overcome this pattern, but to achieve anything that you want in your life and manifest all your goals. So. Um, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. And that's a, a mighty, uh, ask of myself, but, uh, we're going to get it done. So in general, what I feel is momentum's ugly cousin is this concept of comfortability, right? So what's the opposite of everything I just named? You, you know, you're, you're in those beginning stages of manifesting this goal. You don't wrote it down, you know, made the vision plan, you don't, um, you know, started to, to take the necessary steps, you know, enrolled into the class, you're two weeks in, you're starting to enjoy the process, you're starting to fall in love with the work. Now, what is that feeling? That's that feeling of momentum. That's that feeling of I'm growing. That's that feeling of I'm in alignment with the highest version of myself at this moment in my life. That's that feeling of I'm striving for that next level, right? So we have that feeling as well. And that's the feeling that a lot of us crave when we talk about certain desires. We don't necessarily crave the desire. We crave the momentum. We crave the, the adventure of being on the journey of momentum towards the desire. Because in that journey, in that adventure, in that momentum is where all the bliss and all the magic is happening. But that moment is like a climax, like that moment of climax. Yes, you release. Yes, that might be the ultimate pleasure. Yes, that might send you over. But that, that moment lasts so little while we have the whole journey of momentum. So naturally, it's going to cause more satisfaction if you take it from a long-term perspective. So... If we're thinking about the journey, if we're thinking about momentum, and we're thinking about its ugly ass cousin, comfort, reason it's ugly is because it's not that comfort is not necessary, right? We all have a need to have security and some sort of comfort. It's, it's, it's the root chakra. It's, it's what grounds us to this physical reality, right? So we all need some sort of level of comfort and security. But when it turns into stagnation and it starts to turn into resentment against your own self and the lowering of your own level of vibration and self-worth now it's becomes just it starts to become destructive it starts to become something that's not in alignment with you becoming the best version of yourself so 
How do we notice this? Again, like I said, that two week mark after you hit your goal, that's when it usually rears this ugly ass head. It's like you pass the momentum, you get to the climax. Like what happens after you release your seed? You know, you, you have a sex with a girl, boom, boom, boom. The whole night, you might've been in flow state. You might've been pulling out your best game. You might've took it to your best spot. You might've did your best rundown. Your, uh, you know, for my fellas out there, everybody got their own little rundown when it comes to the shorties. But listen, you might've hit your best rundown with her. Now you get all the way to the moment of ah, release. Then they say, you know, what, what, what's happening? You sleep. You're knocked out 15, 20, 30 minutes later. You're knocked out. And that's because you are comfortable. You hella comfortable. Like before that, you had momentum. You had momentum. You had momentum. All going towards a, a, a goal. So that's the first principle what I want to talk about today. And how to overcome this comfort killer. So you noticed it. It usually comes after the completion of an outcome that you Plan it and desire it in your head. So what's the difference between that state emotionally, mentally, and what you do with your actions versus the state of completing that goal? Um, so the difference in those two states is one is something that you have a curiosity of experiencing something new. So you're curious about having a new experience. So like, for example, my life recently. Y'all know, y'all probably seen a couple of vids. I apologize for not making more vids when I was out there. But your boy just got back from Thailand. So we spent the last two months out there in Thailand. I was out in Thailand 60 days. Split half the time in Bangkok, half the time in Koh Samui, the island. And um, yeah, it was a, a very needed and dope experience, right? This is something I've been manifesting, thinking about. I uh, had on the vision board for a while now. We finally made it happen. I got to enjoy that certain lifestyle. And... What had happened was, again, this was a positive experience that I, I, I was curious about. So this was the first step of me experiencing that momentum. Then next thing you know, I started to take different actions. I put a plan together. Okay, boom, I need this certain amount of money. Boom, I got to get this plane ticket. Boom, I got to do all this to set up the whole plan. To go over there, I need to set up this. And you, I, I made it super simple. I need a plane ticket. I need somewhere to live. When I get over there, I'm gonna figure it out. And I need my passport. So I got the passport, boom, got the plane ticket, boom, got somewhere to live. And we make it happen. Now, I obviously make money online. So that was kind of the mentality going into that. So that's two steps if y'all are following. First, set the vision, make it plain, make it something new, make it something that you're curious about, make it something that you haven't attained yet, make it something that you already put and put that at the forefront of your mind, right? Two, you wanna make the plan. You wanna figure out how to get there. And then three is you want to be flexible. You want to take the feedback that you're getting from these experiences and adjusting the course of your life. So the reason why I say that a lot of times it's after an outcome, it's out of a goal that we get into the state of stagnation or, or comfortability is because it's not that the goal is wrong. It's because we're on a linear timeline of growth until we die. So spiritually, we're constantly growing. Spiritually and character-wise, we're constantly growing. Our, our body is constantly dying. It's the dichotomy of life. But through this spiritual growth, we have new curiosities. We have new desires through our learning experiences. So as we learn, as we connect new synapses, as we you know become more intelligent, as we experience new things in life, then we make new neural connections. And ultimately, if you're trying to do what I'm trying to do with my life, and if you're watching this channel, I assume you're the same way, is become the best version of yourself. And what that looks like is optimizing for this good life, a fulfilled life, a happy life, a grateful life. And that's, you know, usually broken down to like health, wealth, relationships, optimizing those, right? Um, but, but not forgetting ultimately what it's all for, which is that happiness, fulfillment, that joy, that alignment, that feeling like I'm on the right path, right? So as we grow spiritually, as we grow as a human being, as we take our lives to new heights and new levels, we have new desires, we have new curiosities. And this is just a part of the growth process. And this is why I wanted to add it to step number three, which is take the feedback and adjust is because a lot of times we can be living the dreams that we had from the past and we haven't grown and adjusted our outcomes, you know, because the, the goal is not necessarily for the materialistic desire or the lifestyle that it could provide. It's for who it becomes, it, who, who, who it makes us become in the process who we become in the process is truly the reward or the treasure in the goal itself. You will see some people 
they'll go get the Lamborghinis, they'll get the big houses, they'll get the girls, they'll get all this and then say they're not fulfilled and then go sell it all and then now they back minimal. So was it the materialistic and the growth or was that needed in their own spiritual process to gain all these things, see what it became of them to, to be able to do so, but then see who they had to become in order to be the type of person to give it all away, have no attachments. So that just shows, again, the dichotomy of that spiritual growth versus the materialistic growth. And our spiritual need is to grow, is to seek that next version of ourselves. So to tie this all together, I'm back from Thailand now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in Dallas for another year. And this is an experience that I feel like my soul, my my spirit, and um, ultimately um, the world and who I'm called to serve needs, right, at this point in my life. Um, like I said, I had in my mind curious and a goal to live this dope, digital nomad lifestyle in Thailand um, and see what that was like. And I experienced it and I really enjoyed it. I really loved it. And um, it's something that I, I'm going to definitely do again as far as like visiting and um, potentially trying out other countries with a similar type of lifestyle. But what I've noticed through that trip and what I may notice in the future is that I'm not as naturally inclined to want to live that type of way in order of highest productivity and, and highest level of fulfillment. It's cool, but I don't think I get, it gets the best out of me, especially I was on a different time zone over there. So that kind of threw me off. But in addition, it's just the nature of always living out of suitcase, unpacking, packing, going up and go. So the reason I say this is because was that the wrong move? No, I needed it. It was necessary on my path. However, coming to this new state, being back in Texas in this new emotional state of experience and that, again, I start to notice these common patterns of, oh, was that worth it? Was this all the world? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I thought it was going to be this. But no, instead of reacting from an emotional standpoint, let's just take the logical data of saying, oh, this is more who I am. This is more... Uh, in alignment with my highest version of myself. So we're coming on 12 minutes and I want to leave you with this. Ask the question, who am I and what do I like? And life is just a constant process of not only becoming ourselves, which is the highest version of myself, but understanding who that is. So I encourage you all to go deeper this week this day, wherever you are in your journey, and reflect on the experiences that you once desired in the past, maybe why you desired them, how it made you feel once you got them, who it required you to become as a person, and what is God calling you to at this next stage in your journey, and who is that calling you to become as a person, and what's more in alignment with not only your natural inclinations of how you feel and what you enjoy and what you like and what you love and what you're passionate about, but also genetically and what just comes naturally to you. Those usually are the things when it comes to your intuition, your natural gifts, what's already inside you are the things that are needed to make you great and make you become who you're destined to become. So if you like the video, like the video, comment what you want to see below next. We back. Subscribe if you're new. Catch you next one. Peace.